بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah Almighty mentioned the gardens and paradises in the hereafter and he mentioned some of their details however all the details that are giving about the trees, the fruits, the houses and palaces in it, the rivers, the places of sittings, the rooms, etc. All of that is just similarities in name. So the similarity ain't there. Only with the names. So because it's impossible to understand or recognize anything, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you an example of things that you know. This is how you get know. Other than that, it is highlighted and mentioned by the Messenger وسلم, clearly that in paradises are things that no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, and no mind has ever conceived or thought about. Now seeing obviously is less than what you hear. Hearing is more than seeing. But thinking, there is no limit to the idea of imagination. But it's still, even that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what is in paradise you can never even dream of. You can never even conceive or imagine. So all the similarities ain't there. Some of the things that are mentioned about paradises is, is the houses and palaces of paradise. This is something that we mentioned in the Holy Quran and by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa in the hadith. Interestingly, your paradise in the hereafter is with nothing. So it's a very good soil, good water, good place. It's ready for everything. However, you have to build it yourself. You have to prepare it yourself. The way to do that is through three different levels. The first level is the condition for being admitted in paradise. The condition is belief in Allah Almighty alone without an associate. So believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to believe in. That is the condition. And then we have the reasons or causes to be admitted in paradise. And that is, in short, the warships and righteous deeds. And then we have the levels in paradise, and that one is based on your morals and extra good deeds that you do. Is it clear? So a condition causes and we have levels. Today we will speak very quickly about the houses and palaces in paradise in this concept. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran that those who believe and those who do righteous deeds for them are paradises and in these paradises are places and rooms and chambers and so on. So how do you build houses and chambers and palaces in paradise? The way to do that is through multiple channels. After belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and good deeds in general. This is indicated in the Holy Quran. Most of the Holy Quran says those who believe and do righteous deeds. True? <coughs> then we have one hadith from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam specifically about Khadija radiallahu anha. Khadija radiallahu anha, one day she was with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about to ent enter upon the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Jibreel alayhi salam came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before she entered. And he told him that Khadija radiallahu anha is about to enter upon you. So relay to her salam from Allah Almighty and from me. SubhanAllah. And then give her the glad tiding of a house made out of pearls. House in paradise made out of pearls. In it there will be no turmoil, no loudness, and no and anything that is unsuitable, no tiredness. So when Khadija radiallahu entered, the Messenger وسلم, told her the glad tiding. The reason for Khadija anha was the first believer in the Messenger وسلم, the one who supported the Messenger وسلم, supported her husband and she did lots of righteous deeds and good deeds with herself and with her money. That is why she deserved this glad tiding in this world. Now, one of the main way to get a house in paradise is to build a house for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, which is a masjid. 
The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anyone who builds a masjid for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Allah Almighty will build for him a house in paradise. For one. Now there is no comparison. Even if the name is the same, absolutely no comparison. But obviously, not everybody is able to do that, true? Now, even if you, the Messenger of Allah Wasallam said in the other hadith, even if it is as small as the place of a sparrow or a bird, a nest of a bird, nobody can pray in such a place. Can you pray in such a place? That is not a masjid. The Messenger of Allah Wasallam said in the other hadith, anyone who builds a masjid, even if it is as small as the nest of a bird, so that place is either to give us a glimpse, no matter how small it might be. Or because this is the place of sujood. And the place of sujood is the actual masjid. Or if somebody puts a marker somewhere just to indicate that this is a masjid. So that is the place of the marker. Or to show that even if you participate and your whole share of the whole masjid was just that small place, Allah Almighty will still build a place for you in paradise. The other way to get that, even if you do not build a masjid, is to go and pray in the masjid. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anyone who goes out early in the morning or comes back late at night from the masjid, Allah Almighty will prepare for him a hospitality in paradise every time he goes early in the morning or comes late at night. Whenever you go to the masjid or come, in the morning or in the evening, Allah might will prepare for you hospitality. What is hospitality? Hospitality is a place, suitable place, suitable settings and atmosphere and suitable uh, hospitalities in the form of food and drink and so on. So for every time a person goes to the masjid or comes back from the masjid, Allah might will prepare for him such a thing. The other way is to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extra prayers. We have spoke, uh, sp uh, spoken about the, this in the previous khutbah, so we're not going to elaborate. But we remind ourselves of the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, praying 12 raka'ah every day will entitle you to a place in paradise. A house in paradise. The second thing after that, which is very easy to do, and a person can do that multiple times every day, which is simply to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Ten times. Ten times will not take much. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ is a very short surah, one line only. So reciting it ten times, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Almighty will build a place for you, a house for you in paradise. In the other narration of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a palace in paradise. A palace in paradise. Now, another thing is uh, limited to the, uh, or, or uh, linked with the daily activities, which is going to the market. Everybody goes to the market. Do you know that every time you go to the market, this is an opportunity to get a house in paradise? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anyone who goes to the market, and upon entering, he says, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, yuhi wa yumit, wa huwa hayyu la yamut, biyadihi al-khayr, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. In most markets and malls, you will find it written in the, in the entrance. Because of this great reward. What is the reward? The reward is multiple things. The Messenger وسلم, said, Allah Almighty will write for him one million hasana. One thousand thousand hasana. And Allah Almighty will remove from him one million sins. And Allah Almighty will raise him one million great in paradise. And Allah Almighty will build for him a house in paradise. So subhanAllah, such a very easy thing that you do every day, probably multiple times, and there is a great reward in it. So you should memorize this and or write it down with you. And whenever you go to the market, recite this dhikr and this remembrance of Allah Almighty to give that reward. Another general uh, aspect which is to be patient and to rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah Almighty mentioned the upper chambers, the upper chambers in paradise, Specific ones, very important. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that, uh, the details of this, we'll come to that. But Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, when He mentioned them, He says it is for those who are patient and relying upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When something strikes a person, he should be patient. 
And for this, Allah Almighty will reward him with this. Now the Messenger وسلم, mentioned a specific form of patience, which is if someone lost uh, his child, whether he's small or, or, or old. Losing a child means by death. If a person is patient and he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un, there is great reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will speak with the angel in that instant to see about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his compassion for his servants. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when Allah Almighty takes the soul of the child of one of you, one person, then Allah Almighty will ask the angels, have you taken the soul of the child of my servant? They will reply in the affirmative. Allah Almighty will tell them, have you taken peace of his heart, his child? They will reply in the affirmative. Allah Almighty will ask them, what did my servant say? The angels will say, he praised you, means saying, Alhamdulillah. And he made istirja, said, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. So saying, Alhamdulillah, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. So Allah Almighty will tell the angels, build for my servant a palace in paradise and name it the house of praise. Oh, yeah. The house of Hamad. Because he praised me, Allah Almighty will raise your mention in the hereafter. So this is a very specific building, specifically for those who at time of difficulties and trials, they praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Inna Allah wa inna ilayhi rajum. Why do you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when such a thing happens? Praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two forms. The first form is to say, Alhamdulillah, when something good happens to you. So it's a form of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing, when bad things happen, you say, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. Praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all situations. Praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all situations. Because whatever happens to you, it is for your own goodness, even if you do not realize it. So you are not aware of it. It looks like a trial, a tribulation, a problem. But you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in all cases, whether you know or not. Whether it seems good or bad. Is it clear? So that is why there is a specific one there. Now the Messenger وسلم, told us about three different houses in paradise at three different levels for three different people. He said, I guarantee a house in paradise, in the lowest part of paradise, for someone who leaves arguing although he is right. Stop arguing although he is right. So Allah Almighty will grant him a house in the lowest part of paradise. And I guarantee a house in the middle part of paradise for someone who does not lie even while joking. Most of the lies come from joking. So the best jokes are those that are made up in lies. But still, if a person insists not to say such a thing and to avoid jokes that are based on lies and so on. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Messenger وسلم, guarantees for him a house in the middle part of paradise. And I guarantee a house in the highest place in paradise for someone who has good morals and etiquettes. That is the highest. We'll, there are so many things actually, the houses of paradise will continue for a very long time, but we'll conclude with two points. The first point is about a specific upper chambers for a specific group of people. The Messenger وسلم, mentioned them, so those are the, the people of businesses, but these businesses are different from the businesses that people know now. There's businessmen and businesswomen, but not in the sense that you know about. Those are people who are concentrating on paradise. The Messenger وسلم, mentioned four types of such activities or businesses. The Messenger وسلم, said that there are upper chambers in the highest place in paradise. That the inside is seen from the outside and the outside is seen from the inside. Very specific building, 
only for a specific group of people. So they asked the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those are for whom? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is for those who give food, share food with other people. And say salam, greet people and talk to them kindly. And those who continue to fast from time to time, not only the obligatory one, and those who spend the night in prayer, in salah. Now, four things that the Messenger وسلم, mentioned, two of them about the relationship between you and other people. And two of them about the relationship between the servant and his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the first two, there are two types that the Messenger وسلم, mentioned, that is an example, which is doing goodness to people by speech and by action. Share with them what you have and say something nice to them. And when it comes to your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned two types of ibadah. One of them by doing something, one of them by abstaining from doing something. So the first one is abstaining from food and drink and intimate relationship, which is siyam. The second one is salah and prayer in the middle of the night when everybody is sleeping. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the last point we'd like to talk about is how to beautify these buildings or these houses. Now obviously, if you build a house for yourself, even in this world, are you going to leave it empty, just like that? Okay, this is a building, but there is nothing in it. Or are you going to try to beautify it as much as you can? So usually, people beautify it in the inside and the outside, true? Right? So usually on the outside, most of the beauty comes from gardens in the outside. So you have trees and flowers and so on. And the inside, usually, people will have some types of treasures and displays and artifacts and so on. Now, in paradise, there is a similarity as well. Now, remember, the Messenger وسلم, told us that the paradise is plain, does not have any buildings, does not have any trees in it, nothing. Your paradise, in paradise, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the highest place in paradise, all of us, inshallah. So your place in paradise, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, has already prepared for the successful ones, is empty. It is ready for everything, very easy to build, very easy to populate, very, very easy to plant in it, but it's empty. You have to do it yourself. The way to do it is through these actions. So now we have new, known about how to build houses and how to build palaces. True? Now how to beautify them. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he sent a letter, a message with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi salam to us, to the followers of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi salam. He sent salam in it and advice. So the salam from Ibrahim alayhi salam to all of us and we reply to him wa alayka salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ya khilaham. The advice is that paradise is plain soil. It has good soil, it has good water, but it is plain. It does not have any plantation in it. The plantation is subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dhikr so everything is planted for you. With every specific dhikr, something is planted for you. Different tree, different palm trees, different herbs and flowers and so on. You are preparing it. Every da everything you do. And it's been prepared now, not when you come. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He spoke about the believers, that Allah Almighty will admit them in paradise that have been prepared for them. So it's already been prepared. Preparation you have to do. That is about the outside. What about the inside? The treasures and the artifacts. The Messenger وسلم, told us about one of the most important treasures in paradise. He said, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله is a treasure from the treasures of paradise. So this dhikr and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are preparing, building, beautifying your places, inshallah, and your final abode and eternal abode. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us paradise, inshallah, and the highest place in paradise. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the dwellers of paradise, yeah. upon whom there will be no fear and no, uh, no anxiety and no sadness. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest place in paradise, in al-Firdaus al-A'la. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to His divine truth. Make us good for ourselves, our families, children, neighbors, and society. 
society and then for all of humanity. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.